I'm trying to improve my skiing skills uh, over this winter and I had you know a few good skiing weekends and I'm hoping to have a few more uh, in the remaining of the season so you know let me try to use an analogy which is uh, borrowed from the skiing world to explain this avalanche uh, phenomena so you know let's let's think of these uh, you know these rebel electrons which are diffusing uh, from the p type region to the n type region you know refusing to uh, mend themselves to this uh, electric field which is trying to oppose that so you know let's think of these electrons as uh, as you know one of these person who is uh, trying to ski down the hill and you know this is my representation of a person who's trying to ski down the hill you know holding his uh, poles and his uh, ski so wh what's happening is you know in this case where i have a low voltage i can think of this you know as skiing down a bunny hill where where you know if i if i fall down essentially you know i i you know i gather myself up you know if i have a collision i you know gather myself up and you know then i try to uh, do down the slope and still I'm I'm still running I'm learning about skiing right this is uh, bunny slope and then if I fall down again I uh, I have a collision and I gather myself and I I you know finally reach uh, down the hill on the other hand what, what's happening uh, in this uh, in the case of when I'm applying a very high uh, very high uh, voltage is you know I'm, I have this again these electrons and they're trying to ski down the hill but what happens in this case is, is if they fall down so if you know if they fall down the slope is way too high over here and what happens is that you know they they collide with other p i mean they when they fall down their energy is high enough that you know they can collide with another person who is trying to ski down the hill and you know they can they can make him uh, you know they can both of these now are you know collide and they are they're again trying to ski down uh, together and you know they collide uh, and they they they, they generate uh, this uh, avalanche or you know this chain reaction where more and more of these skiers are trying to falling apart and eventually you know they have to uh, close down this uh, ski slope and this can happen uh, you know and if you're if you're skiing down one of the uh, black belt so you know one of the steeper slope and uh, similar to this analogy so you need a very high field or this high slope for this kind of uh, phenomena to happen so in you know coming back to electrons and holes so what, what's happening in in terms of uh, electrons and hole is that uh, you know my electrons as you know they're going down the hill and they are generating uh, more of these electrons by this uh, impact uh, ionization phenomena so you know let me draw my uh, let me draw my uh, depletion region uh, in uh, this case and you know so this is the start of my depletion region so you know this i can label this at x equal to zero and this is the end of my depletion region so i can label this, this as x equal to w now what's happening in terms of of the of the you know the currents which are flowing uh, if i were to if i were to plot the electrons and whole currents in this uh, region so in uh, for the case of my electrons these uh, if these i have few of these uh, few of these uh, electrons which start uh, from the p type region and as they traverse down the hill as they go from x equal to 0 to x equal to w the they multiply and they uh, they suffer they you know they they multiply using this uh, impact ionization pro process and I, as i can imagine the the electron current will essentially increase uh, exponentially so my electron current and this is representing the let me represent this as electron current so i'm writing as j in terms of electrons so this would uh, look like it's you know they're starting off with a low value from uh, from the p type region and it uh, it exponentially increases as i as i traverse uh, down the hill in my depletion region similarly if i look at uh, hole current so your know, holes are these uh, these uh, these uh, quirky 
uh, particles which like to ski up the hill. So you know, if I have a hole which is uh, which is uh, in the n-type region, and some of these are rebel holes, so they want to diffuse over to the p-type region, opposing this uh, built-in electric field. So what what will happen is that uh, these electron these holes when they move up the hill, they'll gain enough energy and they will again impact ionize, impact ionize and their, their, their current will occur in a such a manner that they multiply, multiply as, they, as they reach towards the top of this hill. So if I think in terms of uh, the whole current, it would start, uh, it would start uh, from, uh, you know, uh, a negligible value from towards uh, the x uh, equal to the depletion width and it will uh, again increase exponentially as I go towards uh, towards the uh, p-type uh, region and if I think of total current so this is this was uh, whole current and in green was the electron current if I think of the total current the total current through my depletion region has to remain uh, constant so this is uh, j total because of course uh, when I'm in steady state the total current uh, in my device which is flowing through my diode has to remain uh, constant. So now let me put some uh, math around this uh, problem and describe this uh, exponential increase uh, in uh, current uh, using some uh, mathematics. So what can I, I can write in terms of my, uh, my uh, electron current I can write that the change in the rate of uh, electron uh, current. So I can write it as J P. Uh, sorry, let me denote this for elect. So this is for electrons. So J E by uh, divide de taking a derivative in terms of uh, this x, which is uh, my uh, distance uh, in the depletion uh, region. So this must be equivalent to the rate at uh, which my uh, impact ionization uh, process uh, occurs. So let me uh, call denote uh, the rate of impact ionization by this impact ionization coefficient. So I can write uh, this equivalent to the impact ionization coefficients for electrons multiplied by the electron uh, current and also if, if one of these holes also you know it causes uh, suffers impact ionization so I'll have to add for the impact ionization coefficient for uh, holes multiplied by the current density for holes. So this is how would I would describe this impact ionization process. So the increase in the number of uh, uh, electrons if if I travel a small distance uh, delta x would be essentially given by this impact ionization coefficient of uh, electrons multiplied by the electron current plus this impact ionization coefficient of holes multiplied uh, by the whole current and then I can leverage this fact that my total current uh, is the constant I can rewrite this thing so that you know I add and subtract uh, to equivalent term so I can write this as let me denote a different color for this so I can write this over here and so I subtract this this term and then I also add this term so it would be alpha h and j h plus plus j e x so what i'm doing is i'm adding this term over here and you can see i'm subtracting that same term over here so i'm, I'm the overall i'm i'm adding and subtracting uh, these two terms and i'm trying to leverage this fact that this electron and whole current the sum of them is constant so i can write this as alpha alpha h into this uh, j total and now have these the uh, difference of these uh, coefficient alpha n minus alpha h j e and this this is the mathematical equation that is uh, describing my my impact ionization process and further what I'll assume is that my impact ionization coefficient for uh, electrons and holes are equivalent so I'll assume that given that alpha n and alpha p are or alpha n and alpha h 
are equal and this is uh, this is not always the case it is the case for a few of these semiconductors for example for gallium phosphide these uh, uh, the experimental values for this uh, uh, these uh, ionization coefficient in fact turn out to be equal but just to you know simplify my math at the moment i'll assume that these two are equal or this term goes to zero now what I have is uh, I have uh, my impact uh, ionization or uh, this avalanche process is essentially given by uh, given by this uh, differential equation. So now I can integrate it. So I have a constant term over here. So this term is a constant, and so I can just integrate this uh, this uh, equation. And what it's telling me if I integrate this uh, equation, it's telling me that my j e so i'll get this term coming out at uh, width uh, at the end of my depletion region minus j e which is electron current starting at the beginning of my uh, depletion region is essentially equivalent to this uh, uh, this uh, ionization coefficient and it's uh, integral over this uh, depletion width and then i have this constant term which is my j total now, if I look at my constant term, or you know, if I look at my uh, my overall current, it's made up of. Um, if I look at the end of my depletion region, so if I look at x equal to w, it's made up of most of these uh, most of these electrons. And if I look at uh, x equal to zero, it's made up of uh, this uh, most mostly because of holes because these electrons are multiplying as I move along these uh, depletion regions down the hill and these holes are multiplying if I move uh, uh, along my depletion region up the hill so what I can write is that my J total is I can you know rewrite this J total to be equivalent to either my J E at uh, W or uh, or equivalent to my J H at X equal to zero and in this in this case I you know I see a J E W term over here so I replace my J total by J E W and I can further divide this thing by J E W so let me write this down so what I do is J E W minus J E zero and then divided by J E W is the condition for my impact ionization to occur is essentially this should be equivalent to the integral of my impact ionization coefficient over my depletion width so now now what i get is is essentially this should be equivalent to 1 minus j e 0 divided by j e w and this should be equivalent to my integral of my impact ionization rate now i can i can what i can further denote is that um, the number of electrons coming out of the depletion region divided by the number of electron uh, getting in i can denote this by a, a symbol and i call that symbol uh, multiplicity factor because it tells me and i denote it by m and it's I, it's equivalent to the number of electrons coming out of my uh, depletion region divided by the number of electron going in so this tells me you know how many times these uh, these uh, electrons multiplied coming out uh, so for each of these electron which was going into the depletion region how many times did it multiply uh, multiply while it was in the depletion region this is represented by this uh, multiplicity factor so I can, you know, I can rewrite this equation further so that this becomes equivalent to 1 over 1 by m. And this is equivalent to my integral. So now for this breakdown to occur, I should have this multiplicity factor to become infinite because then, you know, I'll have a sudden increase in my current if this multiplicity factor uh, essentially becomes infinite or you know for each of these uh, incoming electrons if it multiplies many times then that is the condition I call as my avalanche breakdown so avalanche breakdown is essentially uh, represented by this M becoming very large so when this happens so this if I look in terms of this equation I can represent my avalanche condition by 
this integral of my impact ionization coefficient and in the case where this uh, multiplication of carriers become really large this integral tends to it converges to one and this is uh, the mathematical condition which describe the avalanche process in my impact ionization.